Hey guys, um, so I left this episode unedited because I'm too ill to fucking listen to it again right now. So I'm just going to release this for better or for worse. Sorry you hear me drinking water and saying um a few times, but anyway, here goes nothing. Enjoy, guys. Hey, guys. Um, we're going to do uh, some Super Bowl predictions and squeeze in another episode here. I'm not sure what we're going to go with yet, but I've been on a lot of really good rants lately. So I'm probably just going to be fucking ranting a lot, and I uh, hope that's okay. Uh, if you guys enjoy listening to people lose their shit, that's probably what's going to happen in this one. Um, anywho, uh, yeah, so Super Bowl predictions. Today is that day, and I feel so bad for the good people of uh, Philadelphia and Minneapolis because... Win or lose, the Eagles fans are going to rip shit through both of those cities. And I don't see that not happening. In any situation, I don't see that not happening. So, and and by the way, I'm going to start off this by saying I know a lot of Eagles fans. And I did a, dis- I did a Facebook post, but I did, did a disclaimer that I do... No one love a lot of Eagles fans. Woo, Danny, um, Ashlyn, I, I, I've seen you on Facebook. I, I love shit out of y'all, but listen, there's no doubt that the Eagles fans are going to rip this city, both of these cities, Minneapolis and their hometown. Uh, I mean, I, I structurally – the damage will probably be worse if they win is my prediction, but we don't know yet. The sad thing is that I can say with pretty much fucking confidence that this is going to happen. That's what's really sad. And because of this, I will be uh, rooting for the new England Patriots this evening, which brings me to my predictions. I believe that the Eagles will win the coin toss and defer. And I believe that Tom Brady may throw a couple of picks in the first half, maybe uh, or, or fumble or something, something that never, something that they never do. I believe that'll happen. I believe the Eagles might go up big Maybe by a touchdown, maybe I mean maybe by a couple touchdowns, maybe by a touchdown and a and a field goal. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that the Eagles will go up big. I'm thinking by at least two touchdowns, and the Patriots probably won't score in the first half because statistically they've never won a Super Bowl in which they've scored in the first half or, or first quarter. I mean, uh, and. I, I, they may not even score in the in the first half at all, but second half they're going to come out of the locker room. They're going to be the the Patriots that you know and and hate, and they're going to run the ball. I think they're going to hold the Eagles scoreless in the second half, and uh, do what the Patriots do and win the fucking Super Bowl. But also, Nick Foles is unlike. A lot of other quarterbacks. The Nick Foles actually reminds me a lot of Tom Brady because he doesn't have uh, one guy that he likes. You know, he he will throw the ball to anybody. He doesn't care if you can get him yard. If you can get the team yards and move the ball, he's going to throw it to you. It doesn't matter. I mean, he uh, Alshon Jeffrey maybe, uh, South Carolina graduate. Um, may maybe uh, he'll he'll be going to Alshon Jeffrey a lot, but other than that, he doesn't really have a. a anybody that he particularly likes. So that being said, uh, I, I think that I think it's going to be a ridiculous game. I think a lot of people are going to count the Patriots out in the first half and uh, go ahead and chalk it up as a loss because they're going to quickly forget that the Patriots are the Patriots. Now, um, 
I don't have any weird, weird things about halftime show or, or bullshit like that. Uh, but I would suggest that any of you who have, um, any of you who have uh, an ability to download the scanner app tonight is probably a good night to listen to Philadelphia or Minneapolis because there's going to be a lot of crazy shit going down. And honestly, the, the trivia question in all of this is what's the number in damage is going to be because it's going to be fucking high. And I feel so bad for the police force in Minneapolis and Philadelphia because they are going to be working. They're going to be getting their fucking pays worth today. But anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. I believe that the Patriots will win probably. I don't see it being a ridiculously high scoring game. I kind of like the under. And I think it's 48. If I'm not mistaken, um, I don't know. I see it being like maybe 24, 17 or something like that. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be it. 24, 17. But, um, I also think that Tom Brady's going to throw a couple of picks. I don't know why I think that, but I do. Um, Nick Foles, Nick Foles is a good quarterback. He actually took me and Adam's team to the Super Bowl uh a few years ago when he was when he was with uh Philadelphia the first round, first first time around. And I got faith in him, but honestly, man, I for the sake of the city of Philadelphia, I almost think that it'll be worse on the city if they win. So uh I know that Every Philly, Philly fan will will um will think the other way on that, but I'm I'm not that. So I will be pulling for the Patriots today because honestly, I'm uh, I, it's no secret. I don't think if you've listened to this before, and if you haven't, I'm a I'm an Alabama fan, and the Patriots are practically the Alabama of the NFL. So um, I think it's only fitting that I root for them. And man, there's just so many fucking videos that I've I've seen and I've shared one on Facebook a while ago and Smitty shared back a a, 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 a scripted video about a Patriots asshole at a party which is funny but I, I, I just I see all of these videos of real life people throwing beer bottles and beer cans and throwing shit at uh, Vikings fans after that loss or after that Vikings loss and, and just, just uh, dumping beers all over Patriots fans and just being super shitty people and in large groups. And it's almost like the group was sitting there and then this one video I shared this, this one guy is just dumping a beer all over this fucking Patriots fans head, just dumping a beer all over it. They're saying, fuck you, get the fuck out of here, fuck Tom Brady. He's wearing a Brady jersey, and a, he's decked out in Patriots gear. And they're just saying, fuck you to this guy. And then all of a sudden, somebody throws a beer bottle and hits the guy in the head. And the dude turns around and says, hey, no beer bottles, no beer bottles. Like, really? Like, you're setting an example to say no fucking beer bottles when you are you just dump your beer on top of this guy? I mean... What the fuck is the world coming to, man, that we literally think that it's okay to treat somebody who feels differently, who roots for a different fucking team like that? Like, really? Is that where we are? I mean, we're fucking eating Tide Pods, for Christ's sake. What the fuck is going on in people's heads that which they feel like they can just do these things that they deem okay and then see somebody else take it one step further and then, oh, shit, so now you're you're in the wrong. Like, it's not like that. Everything is, like, all this is coming from the same fucking vessel within somebody. All this, this idiocracy is coming from somewhere. And the same stream that dumping a beer on somebody comes from also spouts somebody throwing a beer bottle at them. So, I mean, fuck. 
What do you did that that I'm just ill with the state of people. And it's what results in me saying, staying at home a lot and not being around a lot of people because I just fucking cannot stand people as a whole, man. Like just a lot of, a lot of humans are dropping the ball big time and it's sad. It's truly sad. Like I, I, I was, I was at a, I was at a bar the other, I was at Tito's the other night and, uh, me and a couple people got together to watch the state of the union and everybody's going to say, Oh, well you shouldn't do politics in a bar. Why not? Because nobody's fucking talking about it. The f- and, and everybody's like, you shouldn't talk politics at a bar. Well, now it's like you shouldn't talk politics period because somebody's going to get their feelings hurt because the same mentality that this guy's going to dump a beer on somebody who thinks differently than he does is also going to say, well, this person is a racist and a bigot for thinking differently than I do, or this person is a is an idiot or a snowflake or whatever they call the left. And I and I'm on neither side of this, by the way. I am right in the middle. I'm uh, w- probably a conservative libertarian if I had to put a name on it. But the extremes of either side, the right and the left, and when I just when I say right and left, if you are either one of these things, don't take immediate offense to what I'm going to say because I could not per se be talking to you, but the whole of the people who that name represents, and that is the extremes of both sides. Now I see a lot of my friends on the good old Facebook who post shit about. Um, negativity or positivity and it's all doing with Trump and you fall on one side of it either way. And if you don't fall on the right side of it, then you're immediately put in a box. That whole philosophy is fucked. That whole thought process is stupid that you can't confine a person's entire mentality and entire personality on whether or not they are for or against a president. I mean, you just, you just can't box people up like that. And there's too much of that going on in the world. And it's really just dividing us more than it. And and, at a time when we really need to be brought together, I just don't see the benefit in, 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 okay. Somebody says that they don't like, Somebody says they don't like something that he said, or somebody says, uh, shares this tweet with a funny punchline or something like, maybe the person is just being funny. I do this shit all the time. I don't necessarily give a shit about what he said, which uh, that's all I give a shit about what he said, but, but I don't necessarily, um, what am I trying to say? I'm not trying to knock on what he's saying, and I'm not necessarily trying to in, invoke an argument by what he's saying. I'm just making a fucking joke. And by the way, when the fuck did everybody lose their sense of humor? I'm sorry, man. Like, I just, I, I, when did it not become okay to, to, to laugh at something? I mean, in the sake of humor, everybody's acting like this is a fucking new thing. Like if you go back and you if if you listen to any old fucking Robin Williams stand up or any old uh, Richard Pryor stand up or uh, I mean fucking anybody you want to go back and listen to aside of Bill Cosby who was the G rated <laughs> this is ironic that I'm saying this the the G rated comedy wizard and uh, bad bartender apparently but um. I just don't see why it's all of a sudden a new thing that a comedian can't make a joke. Like, man, the good people of Louisiana are mad at Tom Segura right now. And because he made a joke, because now nobody has a sense of humor. And I don't understand it. It's not. And I, I guess maybe if I were from Louisiana, I might feel differently. But I don't. I plugged South Carolina into that joke. And I'm not going to tell the joke because of uh, obvious reasons, but go watch Tom Segura Disgraceful on Netflix. I thought it was fucking hilarious, um, but I, I don't have the I don't have the same issues with the things that he said that other people might because of my disassociation with it. And that's not 
a purposeful disassociation. It's just I, I I never was placed in those situations, so I have no ties to them, nor do I feel a need, or nor do I see anything wrong with the joke. If he actually, if people actually thought that we should build a wall, that he thought we should build a wall around Louisiana, they're fucking out of their minds. It's just people don't know how to take a joke and laugh. And if you don't like something he said, be like, ooh, that was a little much. But you know what? It's it's comedy. If if you're not a good comedian, you're not, I mean, if you're not making people think about what the fuck you just said, then you're not probably not a good comedian. And anyway, I'm not going going down that road because there's a lot of shit that I can catch from saying what I've just said, and I don't care. But anywho, this is this is about this is about uh, the real me talking to you for a little bit, which is just an angry fucking person, and I'm sorry for that. But I digress. We were watching the State of the Union at Tito's the other night, and we had the sound turned on, and there were several people in the bar who were saying, oh, well, I'm going to leave if you don't turn the sound off on this, which I get it. It's a bar. We're, we're not here to, to do what we're doing. We're here to listen. They're, you're here to listen to music and drink alcohol and forget about the bigger problems in the world. You're here to forget about these problems. But the only thing about that is, is that doesn't make these problems go away. People are just so quick to jump on a bandwagon about Trump one way or the other. And they do this without any substance of why they're only basing their they're only basing their opinions on what they've seen and read other people say for the most part. And I, and I for the most part, I'm not singling any, any one. There's a, there's a few groups of there's, there's a few friends that I, I have on both sides of this who are actually informed state, their arguments, state statistics, like give numbers and reasons as to why they believe this thing that they're saying. And I 100% support that. I'm on I'm on the side of logic. I'm a logical person. I think I try to be logical. I try to reason logically. And I appreciate no matter what side their stance is, I appreciate logic in someone's reasoning. That being said, there's so many people who do not use logic. They'll get on Facebook and they'll read some, this person's opinion and they'll read this person's opinion and they'll form their own opinion based on other people's opinions rather than basing them on the facts of where those other people's opinions came from. I hope you followed me on that. I know that was uh, confusingly worded, but there not taking the time to listen to the things that are actually said. And they'd rather complain and talk about leaving a bar when this is going on, when the things that are being said are actually important. And our future is altered by a lot of the things that are said. And people don't understand or not understand and I have to say this every time it's fucking shitty it's terrifying to me that I have to say I'm not talking about all of you because somebody will actually get their fucking feelings hurt and think that I am coming down on them by what I'm saying and that's not what's happening but I mean see this is just a big circle of everything that I say is going to offend somebody and that's it's shitty that I should have to apologize for everything I fucking say but <clears throat> so people who don't give a shit about what's good is I don't give a shit what he says. I don't want to hear another word that man's got to say. Well, the words that man says are detrimental to the future of our country. And whether you give a shit about what the man says, the future of our country is an important thing because worst case scenario Worst case scenario, we have seven more years of Donald Trump. 
And I say that as a worst case scenario from that mindset of thinking. Like if a person has a problem with Donald Trump, worst case scenario, you have seven years to deal with that. Now, on the, the exact other side of that coin, it'll make it a lot harder for somebody who has a problem with Donald Trump to deal with him if the people who support him are just fucking ignorant and using this as a fucking opportunity to boast like they brag about their fucking teams. And that's just bullshit. And I just don't even, and here's another fucking sports analogy for you. I'm an Alabama fan. As I've said, most of you out there fucking have spent enough time around me to know that if any anybody ever asks me about my fucking team, I rarely ever, unless I'm invoked, bring out the well fucking we keep winning. We we got plenty of trophies to fucking. I rarely ever say anything dicky according to that, like boastful according to this shit. I'm always second guessing my team. I'm always saying whoever, whatever team we were playing, I'm always like, well, shit, they, you never know. They, you know, anything could happen on any fucking given Saturday. And I, I've me millions of fucking times. Have I said this? And I only say that so that I can back up my argument as the saying, don't fucking boast when you win. That's just a shitty thing to do. It makes it shittier for everybody around you. Be sympathetic. Understand that you got your wish, but a lot of other people did not. And you boasting about getting yours is not going to make it easier on anybody else. So there. that being said, I have deleted people from my Facebook because of this, because of this. Like I've deleted people pro and against Trump, both, just because they wouldn't shut the fuck up. And they wouldn't let, they, they would, everything was an argument then. Why now is everything an argument? Because I'm here to fucking tell you, everybody that voted for Trump isn't a fucking shithead. And everybody that voted for Hillary isn't a fucking idiot. Though the fucking news and everything you watch on TV and everything you read on Twitter and most of what you read on Facebook is going to point towards those fucking things. And that's just not how it is. People don't, and I'm going to say this again because it's important. You can't confine people to a box because of one choice that they made. I mean, shit, this person might be a Ford guy too. And you might be a Chevy guy. Is that going to, I mean, is that literally going to fucking uh, make you just, and, and as I'm saying this, I'm thinking of a lot of my friends who have posted negative Ford ads and negative Chevrolet things on Facebook. But seriously, and all of this is about Facebook, which I, I, I guess I should just delete Facebook. But anyway, is that, are you going to uh, defriend somebody because they say that Chevy's better than Ford? I mean, <laughs> Are you gonna are you gonna cut somebody off and it's gonna make it awkward at Thanksgiving because they pull up in a Chevrolet? I mean, seriously, if that Chevrolet's got a fucking Trump sticker on the back of it or a Hillary sticker on the back of it, I guarantee you that it's gonna change things. For now. But in the long run, what's gonna matter? You lost a friend? I've seen people who've been friends for 30 years who don't speak anymore because of this, because of a simple difference in choices. And it's not going to fucking matter. It doesn't matter who got elected. Hey, that brothers, your life ain't going to change no matter who got elected. And that's the truth. If the president, if the president's position was so important they wouldn't let us pick him or her. Think about that for a second. Do you really believe, do you really believe that if the president, the office of the president of the United States was so detrimental to the well being of our country, would they let us choose this person? We're eating fucking Tide Pods. 
I mean, seriously, think about that. What I mean, where is <laughs> I, I've turned into my granddad. I, if any of you out there knew Gordon Hudgens, you probably hear a lot of him in what I'm saying. Man, what are we going to do when? What are we? What are we? What are we going to do when? Seven years is gone, and and Donald Trump is made president. Or what? What are we going to do in seven years? Like, given that Donald Trump lasts seven years, let's let's just say this. Let's just hypothetically say that. What are we going to do when somebody worse than him shows up? When somebody who is instead of having a video release saying grab them by the pussy, then what's going to happen when a video of a guy services of him just, I don't know, uh, uh, hitting a woman or what? I'm just saying hypothetically, what if, what if a video services of him just beating the shit out of his spouse and then we, then, uh, a certain group of people elect this person. What are we going to do then? This Donald Trump situation can be one of two things. It can be a situation that can set you up to be miserable for the rest of your life or be a boastful dick, or it could be a situation that could teach you that not everybody in the world feels the same way about things that you do. And it's about time to fucking grow up and learn that there's more than just us in the world. And by us, I mean, by us, I mean, whoever you may be, there's more than just you in the world. There's more than just me in the world. And that's a lesson that was hard for me to learn. I have a hard time with people who do things differently than me. And I've worked, I'm working on fixing that, but that is because I've used this Donald Trump situation to see, holy shit, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe that all of this Facebook and Twitter hate and all this hate on the news and cable and everything, all of this, everything becoming political. You can't even watch the Grammys without somebody bringing it up. Maybe that's just the, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe that's just the amplified version of what I have going on in my life. And maybe I'm taking this as an opportunity to say, you know what? People don't have to believe the same thing that I do. Maybe it's okay if somebody wants to think differently or maybe, you know what? Maybe if you like the stones better than the Beatles, you know what? That's all right. There was a time in which I would argue the Beatles till I was blue in the face, which is another podcast. But it's okay for people to believe differently. Now, if there's a legitimate, if there's a, a one way path to do something, like I'm sorry, but there's only one way to run to first. You know, if it's a situation like that, I'm going to say, hey, man, you're doing that wrong. There's only one way to do that. But when it comes down to opinions, there's no wrong opinion. There may be an opinion you don't fucking agree with, but an opinion is somebody's opinion. And that, that to them is right. Whether it's right or not in, in the grand scheme of things or, or literally, but that's their opinion and they're entitled to that. And, it's not your job to argue. It's not your job to convince somebody else to believe your opinion. It's okay to state your opinion, but at the point to which somebody is con trying to convince somebody who obviously does not want to conform to that, then, then there's a problem. I mean, I, I that's, that's really something that I have learned to, I've learned how to see 
what I do in that light, if that makes any sense. And I invite everybody who listens to this to do the same thing. Like I said, there's only one of two ways that this is going to go. It's either going to go to where you can learn something from this situation or you don't. And and if you don't learn anything, that's just not going to make this country a very happy or this world a very happy place. And it's not going to make it's not going to make being a part of this a very pleasurable experience. I just hate that uh, you know, I love I love this country. I love America so much. It bothers me that so many people care so little and argue so much. It's almost like I see so many people who are sim- who were sympathetic for Hillary Clinton and who just bash Donald Trump by the things that the news has said he said and by ties that he may or may not have with another country and I don't and I don't see a lot of people who are actually complaining about the state of the people in this country, the state of Americans. Yes, there's a lot of people who are, are who are being very uh, welcoming to any, any, any immigrant from any other country who wants to come to America and better themselves. They're doing the American dream better than Americans are. They're coming here to make a better life for themselves. And Americans aren't like, that's what we are, y'all. Y'all don't understand that we were immigrants here. We came here to make, to, we came here to have religious freedom. We came here so that we could worship a God that is not sanctioned by our nation. We came here to get out from under Catholicism. That's why we ended up in America. And we have people who are trying to come here and do the same thing that we did a few hundred years ago. And we're condemning them for it. I don't understand. I have a declaration of independence hanging on my wall. I'm looking at it right now. I love this place. I love this country. I love its people. Whether they agree with my, whether I agree with them or not, I love them. Everyone, if you can hear this, I love you. Everybody in the world, I do. But Jesus Christ. When is it going to stop? When is this fucking nonsense going to stop? When's enough enough? When Trump's assassinated? Is that what they want? Or impeached? Is that going to make it better? When is, or, or, or when Hillary's put in jail? When's enough enough? When you find the answer to that question, we'll be able to get somewhere in this country. When you figure out the answer to when enough is enough, we'll be able to move forward. Because right now, we're just running around in circles chasing each other with, with iPhones. And it's, it's, we're not getting anywhere. It's not doing anything. We're, we're on a merry-go-round and it's fucking sad. Everybody's shitting on everybody else and we're just slinging shit everywhere. It's graphic and disgusting, but that's exactly what's happening. And it's a lot easier to see when it's a lot easier to see when you remove yourself from 
the from public basically. I don't. I don't spend a lot of time in public. I, I was. I, I was uh, fucking around with somebody on Facebook the other day about uh, one of my friends who is uh, one of my friends who is an avid uh, disliker of Trump. Posted something hilarious on Facebook, and I got to reading the comments of it for a little while, and then a few hours later, I was trying to give a little bit of comic relief in it. And uh, I posted taxation is theft on this. And then after that, I went and uh, posted taxation is theft on every video that I, I looked at for like 10 or 15 minutes just because it's funny. And I went back and looked and there was a couple of replies that I had. And um, I posted or somebody was like, or then after a while, I was I was fucking around with people again and said uh, 9-11 was an inside job. Somebody replied, inside of what? And my immediate response was inside the, I can't remember exactly how I worded it, but inside the minds of robotic Americans who believe that CNN and Fox News are telling them the truth. <laughs> which I actually believe like I, I, I Joe Rogan said it and it, it's fucking true. Like I look at the same story covered on different news channels and they're completely different. One of you fucks are lying. Joe Rogan said that. And that's 100% true. One of you fucks are wrong. One of you people are lying. This is the same story being covered two different ways. One of you is wrong. I'm sorry. I'm not in the situation so I can't decipher which is right and which is wrong. Therefore, I don't watch either of those. I don't watch any major news networks. And I I, I, and I uh, advise that you don't either. If you only watch what, if you only watch the news channel that's going to conform to your beliefs and tell you what you want to hear, then when are you ever going to reach common ground with somebody who, believes differently than you because that's the, and if that's not your goal, then you need to reevaluate your, your walk through this thing. You know what I mean? You need to reevaluate your mindset. If you don't wish to seek common ground with people who have different opinions than you, because that's just an illogical, ignorant way to live. That's all that is, is an ignorant way to live. But I digress once again, so I posted uh, GIFs or GIFs or whatever the internet calls them of Pink Floyd, the wall stuff, the one of the, the kids sitting in the desk with no faces and then of the teacher screaming at the, at the kids all, all in a row and blocked off. And then the one of the kids were there. And if you've never seen Pink Floyd, the wall, Google these images, it, it, it'll make sense. And then of the kids just walking off into the meat grinder and it's pretty much just they're they're these news stations, these our school systems, our everything is just and maybe not the school system so much anymore. But I know definitely when I was there, it, it was they were definitely pointing you in a direction. And uh these these the media and all of these things that people are consuming every day mentally are pointing them in a direction to just be another brick in the wall, basically. And that's 100% real. That's happening. If you don't notice it, then it's happening to you. So take a closer look at that. But he, he posted back, you don't get out much, do you? And I said, absolutely fucking not. And uh, I posted a GIF of uh, Jordan Belfort, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Wolf of Wall Street. Absolutely fucking not. And then he asked back, are you scared? And I sent him back another GIF of uh, one of the those Big Bang Theory guys breathing into a bag. And he laughed. And I laughed. And that was the end of that conversation. I'm 100% sure that that guy has a different belief system than I do. 
and even over the uh, even over the big bad internet, we reached a common ground at the end of this, where we could both make a joke of this situation and laugh because apparently the uh, uh, the sense of humor is not lost in every American, but just a few. Um, but that but but going back to going back to when is enough enough. If I can reach common ground with somebody who I feel certain has different views than I do over the internet, why is it so hard for everybody else? And here I go again. Why is it so hard for everybody else to do something that I do so naturally? Uh, why, why is it so hard for people to just love somebody else why is it so hard to just understand somebody else's beliefs i just don't i just don't get it people don't have to believe the same thing that you do there's a right and wrong way to do a lot of things but one of those things is believe for yourself wait a minute i said that wrong there's a right and there's a right and wrong way to do a lot of things but believing in your believing for yourself is not one of those things your belief system is your belief system and that's nobody else's you could have adapted it from your parents or or someone who taught you to believe this way and that's fine but you're not going to believe exactly how they did because you're not them you're going to have your own way of doing everything and that's your way of doing everything. Everybody else doesn't have to do that. Everybody else doesn't have to believe that. But I'm getting, I got getting a little angry because uh, we have. I, I get so mad when people don't live up to their potential, and I'm one of those people. I'm, I'm, and I'm. I say say this a lot and those who are closest to me will know this next statement is true. I'm harder on myself than I am on everybody else. And I'm pretty hard on everybody else, but I'm much harder on myself than I am on everybody else. I expect a lot. I expect a lot more from myself than I do other people. And I just, I am blown away at the lack of effort to understand someone else. I'm I'm blown away at the lack of effort and that that Americans are putting towards making this country a place that I can be proud to live in because we are a joke to the rest of the world. I can assure you of that. And no, I haven't been to these places. But I can assure you that the way shit's going over here, y'all, we're a fucking joke. We're eating, y'all, we're eating Tide Pods. The shit you throw in your washing machine. Kids are eating them. A couple years ago, kids were setting themselves on fire. They're doing that, y'all. That's happening right here. I mean, Jesus Christ. Read a fucking book. <sighs> I got to get out of here before I I, I I go down a bad road. But uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry. I, I don't know if I'll even edit this. I might just fucking release it how it is with all the ums and dead silences and shit and uh. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm leaving that one. (sighs) Super Bowl. About to go to Bubba's and uh, watch the Super Bowl. And once again, I believe Philadelphia goes up big early. The Patriots make a couple of mistakes they don't normally make. Um... I still believe that they'll probably be the fewest penal. They'll be the the least penal penalized team because 
they're a good team. They're they're a good team, and everybody hates Bill Belichick because he knows the rule book better than their coach does. And I think the Patriots are going to win because they're the Patriots, and this is the Super Bowl. So, uh, what an eventful uh, forty five minutes! Goodness gracious. Um, sorry, I sorry about that. I, I if I offended anybody, uh, uh, I, I I guess I'm sorry. I don't I don't know. I'll have to talk to you in person and find out what offended you. Um, by by all means, get up with me in person. If I have said something to offend somebody, please. I want to know about this. I don't I don't I want the opportunity for you to change my mindset. I want to know why you think the way you do. And I also want you to understand why I think the way that I do. So I, I want this to relationship to go both ways um, in the good way. See, that's probably going to offend somebody. And it's just a joke. Fuck. Anyway. Merle's in the stuff, episode seven. Uh, I'm going to have uh, Esteban coming back with us in the next couple of, uh, couple of weeks. I'm not sure. Days. Not sure when that's going to happen. Um, also, uh, Sunset Grill has been uh, on a small hiatus due to uh, holidays and beginning of the year and such, and um, going to be doing some more with that. So definitely check out Sunset Grill podcast for your daily dose of uh, conspiracy. If you haven't listened to that yet, you'll have enough time to catch up on all the episodes uh, by the time our next one is released. And... Also, cornbread, cast iron skillet, we've been doing a little bit more of lately with a few guests here and there. And uh, if you haven't listened to that one, definitely check that out and uh, see what that one's all about. But anyway, I'm going to go watch the Super Bowl. It is 5 o'clock. There's a couple hours left. Before we get to watch this nonsense, thoughts and prayers go out to the good people of Philadelphia and Minneapolis. I mean, I I hate that it's I hate that I'm so confident it's gonna happen, but fuck, man, they're that's gonna be a it's gonna be a long night for the law enforcement in those two cities. Oh goodness. Well, here goes nothing. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll uh, I'll have some more content out to you here. I'll probably may do may release a little sports short tonight, a recap of the Super Bowl, and uh, see how we see how my prediction holds up. It'll be really funny if uh, the exact opposite of what I said happens. But anywho. Like our page on Facebook, Merle's Inlet Stuff Podcast, uh, podomatic.com slash podcast slash M-I-S nerds, I think it is. Um, or just Google search Podomatic and Merle's Inlet Stuff Podcast for Androids and find us on the podcast app on iPhone, which is on your phone somewhere. Leave us reviews. Let us know what you think. Thanks for listening, guys. Enjoy. Enjoy.